Hi everyone, Father Dave here in the library at St. John the Evangelist Church, part of Most Holy Trinity Parish. So great to be with you today, and we're going to ask God's blessing on all of you and all in our neighborhoods today. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, as we've just celebrated that great feast of Pentecost, we pray you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, our neighborhoods and our neighbors. Help us to renew your church and continue to build your kingdom as we ask your blessing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, this has been a eventful week so far. We celebrated Pentecost, that great event of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost meaning the 50 days after Easter when the Holy Spirit fell on the apostles in the upper room. And so for some 50 days, they knew the Lord was risen, uh, but they still had no real direction, no plan of what they were going to do to share that good news. It was only when that Holy Spirit came to them and renewed their lives. It basically drove them on out of the upper room, just like the Spirit, when it fell on the Lord in that form of a dove, at his baptism, immediately the Spirit drove him out into the desert, where basically he picked a fight with Satan and overcame all of his temptations and began to take back the territory of the kingdom of God and the souls that really uh, belong to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, after Pentecost, we also got to celebrate Mary, the mother of the church. That's a great uh, memorial for us in the church, remind us that, you know, the church is the body of Christ, along with all the baptized, all the believers, and Mary then, in a special way, is our mother. We also had a celebration of the Basilica of St. Francis of Assisi, and so that reminds us of that tremendous work of St. Francis of living that gospel poverty, but also caring uh, for all the poor, all of God's people. And so as we take a look ahead at today, we're really reminded of the mercy that God wants to show to all of his people. You know, whenever we're in the presence of God, we are receiving his love and mercy. It's just the way God is. So we go all the way back to the beginning. We could go back to the book of Genesis when God walked freely with Adam and Eve in the garden. His love and mercy was there in its fullness. They never knew anything else. It was only at the time of their sin that they lost that presence of God and that easy uh, reception of his love and mercy. And so God began then to rebuild and he began to work in many different ways to bring his mercy back to his people. So we could take a look at the time when Moses was told to make the tent of the meeting and the Ark of the Covenant. And so God gave him very specific plans of how to make the Ark. But on the top of the Ark is a gold plate. And that's because God said that was going to be his seat. They called it the propitiatory. A better way of saying it would be the mercy seat. So that was going to be where God's presence would be among his people. And again, that presence of God brings God's love and mercy to the people. Later on, when they built the temple, the ark was taken into the Holy of Holies, the center of the temple, that place where once a year the high priest would enter after making sacrifice, that he would bow to the ground and whisper, uh, the name of God, and God would pour out his mercy again on his people. For us, now, with the coming of the Holy Spirit, we can be in the presence of God, as they say 24-7, that Spirit of God lives within us, and it helps us, if we're open, to have that love and mercy all the time. As St. John Paul II had told us in his encyclical, he had a couple of uh, letters, a very important one, Divas in Misericordia, or Rich in Mercy, telling us that the Father is rich in mercy, and that anybody who comes into his presence is certainly going to receive that gift of his mercy, his forgiveness, and new life. And we're told there in that letter, and also in the one towards the third millennium, that God has a special love for those who are the prodigal ones, the prodigal sons and daughters, those who have kind of gone far from the presence of God. And so we can do a few things to help bring those people back to the presence of the Lord. And some of the things we can do, we kind of already mentioned, if we go to church or we go to Mass, we're putting ourselves in the presence of the Lord. We receive his love and mercy and we can pray for those who are still distant from the Lord, that they, wherever they are, may receive again his mercy and be drawn back to him. If we, again, take the opportunity, if we can, to go to Eucharistic Adoration 
Again, there is a very special presence of the Lord there in the tabernacle. And it's a place, again, where we can receive his love and mercy and we can pray uh, for others. You know, it's been a long history of God wanting to give his mercy to his people, for them to be open to receive his love. And how many times uh, we failed to be open to that. If we go back to uh, Hosea, in the first chapter, God told Hosea to name one of his children no mercy. Because of the sins of the people, God was saying there would be no mercy for them, trying to get their attention so that they would turn back to him. Later on, after the coming of the Holy Spirit, St. Peter in his first letter says, once there was no mercy for you, speaking to Jews and Gentiles alike, now you have found mercy. We come into the presence of the Lord and he is going to be there for us. So one of the things we're going to be talking about, especially this weekend coming up, is praying that the Holy Spirit, who has now come to us in that very special feast of Pentecost, will fall on our neighborhoods and that they will come to our neighbors. And so we want to pray for them, maybe even walk around the neighborhood saying a rosary or saying some prayers if we can for every household in our neighborhood. We're going to move on from that to see if we can't find out some of the names of neighbors we don't yet know and begin to pray for them by name. You know, the Holy Spirit is very powerful, it does unexpected things, it likes to surprise us, so we, we want to see what kind of surprises the Holy Spirit can bring to our own neighborhoods and to our lives. We want to see that great renewal that we've seen in so many lives of the saints to be in our own church, our own neighborhood, and with some people that the Lord really wants to have, draw, have, have use us to help draw them to him. He really wants to share his love and mercy with them. And so as we just go through today and through the rest of this week, let's begin again praying for all in our neighborhood, for everybody that we know, people in our families, that the Holy Spirit will fall afresh on all of them and bring them into that one body of Christ where we can be that real presence in the world to be a witness to all the nations as the Lord commissioned us to do to draw them to that great sacrament of baptism <clears throat> to become one in the body of Christ. And so let's just ask the Lord's blessing on all watching today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.